What's up my movers and shakers? I'm Dave, this is MS Paints, and today's question is, can you make 40k scenery from the humble pizza box? And yes, of course you can, but will it be any good? That's the actual real question. I know that I can cut this into some right angle corners and basically say that's a ruined building, but will it actually not look shit? Let's find out. So to follow along for today's blue Peter, as you probably have gathered, all you're going to need is a stack of pizza boxes that you definitely have lying around your house at some point. However, one thing you may not have lying around is today's secret ingredient, and this is to make our concrete textures pop and bring the buildings to life. Okay, so while I'm doing a load of stuff that is visually self-explanatory, let me take a moment to talk about pizza boxes. When was the last time you sat back and had a real think about it? Pizza boxes are up there with soy sauce bottles and the Great Pyramids of Giza in their incredible engineering design. They gotta be damage resistant, stackable, hold up to moisture, temperature insulated, and be able to regulate their own humidity. It's also a flawlessly large piece of print media that can hold advertisements or useful warnings like, I don't know, be careful now, contents might be hot. So like every 40k building ever, we're going to be doing the classic ruined right angle. These windows are guided by miniature's waist height and then measured from there using a sharp pound and blade for the clean cuts. And yeah, if you're also about to complain about the sight of a greasy pizza box on your screen, then you have probably got too much time on your hands. Of course, you may have the gusto to put cardboard through your dishwasher, but I don't. And I certainly do not fancy explaining to the hard as nails middle-aged Turkish man behind the counter at my local pizza shop why I'd like some brand new pizza boxes to make little buildings for my little toy soldiers out of. Again, that might be your speed, but I'm just gonna stay on the bench for this one, all right? A little bit of trim here and there is gonna help add some variety to our boxes. Window ledges, window frames, picture rails, skirting boards, all that kind of stuff, whatever is gonna add the most variety with the smallest amount of fuss. And I'm just making these with the offcuts from the main cardboard pieces we've used for the actual building structure. I'm gonna add me a greasy second floor to the larger buildings because it's kind of just the done thing. I can't express how much of an ingrained design this is for tabletop gamers, we all know it. All buildings are corners and they all have blown out windows and the second floor is always intact for good vantage points. I've cut out and accented five buildings in a total from, well, five pizza boxes, which is pretty good. A large, a medium, and some smaller pieces. This is easily enough terrain for a thousand point game or a kill team game, or if you're feeling flush, maybe a two thousand point game. And with the quantity looking good to me, it's time to smooth things out a little bit. Yeah, real smooth. To hide those cardboard edges, I'm running over pretty much all the edges with some Poundland tile grout. For rebar, I usually use garden wire so I can pose it afterwards and bend it around, but for speed and simplicity's sake, I'm, I'm just using some cocktail sticks. Here's a classic GW how to make terrain tip. Two pieces of cardboard, reinforced on the sides with masking tape. Done. It's faster and easier than sculpting with foam or sculpting mold, and you can work a nice gradient in with very little fuss. Big Blue Peter vibes. This is just regular old cardboard that big heavy things are shipped in, so it's gonna be, well, once it's double layered up, it's gonna be virtually indestructible. With the plastic in the tape and the PVA, it's gonna be real hard and tough. And now we've got ourselves a better look at how our finished product is all gonna come together. Found these little guys on Amazon for about £3 a pack and they're great for custom piping. No skulls, no aquilas, just irreverently simple plumbing. Considering how long it takes a real world plumber to get the parts for the jobs, I dread to fucking think what it must be like waiting for parts in the 41st millennium. Tin foil's always a good shout for some ground variation. Just crush it until it's hard and once it's glued and covered in ground texture, it ain't going nowhere. 
this stuff is obviously as cheap as anywhere you can get tin foil, and the fact that it just doesn't require any drying time means I can make landforms and we're done. Most of my 40k terrain, space permitting, will feature these dragon's teeth or whatever they're called. They're just offcuts from a Forge World Titan, but they're basically the right shape out of the bag and add some nice character to a base. I'm also a big fan of useless defences in my 40k terrain. I think even the most basic of weapons in Warhammer can shatter wood to absolute splinters, but this kind of stuff adds a last stand kind of desperation to a scene like this, and it breaks up an otherwise fairly monotonous colour scheme. So, it is time to reveal the secret ingredient, and how we're going to texture our concrete. It's flour, but this isn't just any flour. This is £1.25 a bag independently sourced and made plain baking flour. The highest quality you can get without dusting off your tuxedo and going into a waitrose. Put down something to protect your work area and preferably something that you can wipe your ass on later, because this step is real messy. Everything that we want to be concrete is going to get painted in a mixture of watered down PVA glue. And from as directly parallel above as we can get, we're going to sieve on the flour. Of course you can throw it on by hand, but the results may vary. Prior to priming, I've given each of the buildings a spray with a gloss varnish to help hold the flour in place. Flour obviously does absorb moisture because that's kind of its thing. So that process makes the texture turn rock hard. I'm going to spray everything black before misting from above with a lighter grey colour. Dirty highlights are going to be applied with a craft sponge, just basic greys and browns. And then we throw on a basic black acrylic wash just to mute the highlights a smidge. To smooth out the gaps we have between the buildings and the bases, I've mixed some sand and PVA together in quite a thick mixture to make a bulky sort of padding thing. This means I'll be using less scatter cover down the line since I won't be needing to plug big gaps between the two. Cool, so let's get this wrapped up and send these terrain pieces packing. I'm covering all the unoccupied ground with PVA glue. When I met up with Luke for the last video, he sent me packing with a few bags of his base ready range, so I figured rather than painting my ground cover, I'd let these materials do the work for me. Like with any scatter of this type, once it's glued down, let it sit for an hour to get real tacky, and then wet it through with rubbing alcohol. Why rubbing alcohol? Well, it's a low surface tension liquid that, while wetting, holds the material in place. Regular water is too heavy bodied and just kind of sits on top of your materials. We need this stuff soaked through so that we can go in with our watered down PVA, or in this case, Geek Gaming sealant, and lock it all in place. The sealing stage really doesn't work at all without the pre-wetting, so try not to skip that. I've only got a couple of hours left on this, including shooting the finished shots. So a few token dry brushing passes here and there are going on, and some contrast paint on our wooden panels. I'll leave them dark, mostly because, I'll be honest, I don't want to sit and watch contrast paint dry, but also to contrast the dark brown and lighter greys around it. And there we go, they're not amazing, they're not great, but they are a table worth of terrain made from pizza boxes and some other household garbage. And of course, secret ingredient flour. I've done similar stuff before, but using tile grout instead of flour. Generally, the grout, I would say, is better, but flour is a shitload safer if you haven't got the right PPE. Once they're dry to the core, because obviously this is cardboard, don't forget, I'll be using them for many games to come. They cost next to nothing to make and a couple of days of time investment, and for that kind of low investment across the board, I don't think I could do much better. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I'm out of here.